You know, I've been kind of down a little bit more and more. I've been in the ministry for 20 plus years and it just seems like the body of Christ is just continually going backwards. Um, and this message is going to be about Christ's church is failing him. The church is failing Christ right now. I was watching a documentary there uh, about a gentleman that I saw on America's Most Wanted uh, back several years ago, and it's on Amazon Prime uh, called Where is Robert Fisher? He's on the 10 most wanted list uh, as far as because he shot his wife in the head and he slit his ch kid's throats and then he blew the house up and he's nowhere to be found. And he's on the 10, uh, 10 most wanted list with the FBI. Supposedly self-professed Christian, went to some Baptist church, him and his family, active in the church, father-in-law, mother-in-law, everyone's all in the church. And why am I talking about this? Because there's so many self-professed Christians out there that claim they love the Lord, claim that they want to do the work of the Lord, put up this facade. But just like Robert Fisher was a phony and Christ's church is failing him. I have my notes right here. I wrote some things down that I'm going to share today. So stay with me because this message is going to be heavy. It's not going to be pretty. But as you guys know, I tell it like it is and tell the truth and speak what the Lord places on my heart and speak with boldness. So let's, what else I have on here? I'm talking about Robert Fisher and I thought of George Tiller. I watched a documentary about George Tiller as well a little while, uh, several years ago. He was in a late term abortion doctor of one of the only few within the nation that performed late term abortions. And he had everyone trying to kill him and doing all of these things to the point where he had a bulletproof car and security and things of this nature because it had gotten so crazy for him after a woman had shot him in both arms trying to stop him from performing surgeries. But he was an usher at his church. So he went to church all the time. And some guy decided some other Christian, so self-professed Christian guy decided that he wants to be a martyr for the babies. He wants to be, uh, uh, you know, this uh, person that is able to solve the problem with abortions and things of that nature. So he went to the church a few times, sat there in the pew with the Bible study, with the service to scope things out. And then he came back one day there, and Dr. Tiller was speaking to someone in the lobby during the church service, and this gentleman walks up to him and shoots him in the head, kills him right there during the service. And then as the other people, the ushers and other people try to detain him, he put the gun on them and threatened to shoot them. And he did end up getting arrested and end up being locked up, but he was proud of what he's done self-professed Christian. There's a lot of people out there that claim that they love the Lord, but it's a whole different agenda. And the church and those that are actually within the body of Christ, the ones that truly, you know, we I know their heart has been in the right place. Unfortunately, it has fallen off as the years went by. And this is why society, because I have in my notes right here, I have a lot of troubles concerning society. Christians have contributed to it as well. I have because many have failed to learn and study the word of God and show thyself approved unto God. They've fallen under false doctrines. They're following other people. They're worshiping false idols. The first commandment is being broken, has been broken by the church where no other God should be before him. But the church, the body of Christ, have turned idols. Pastors are idols. Other authoritative figures are idols. Politicians are idols. Our job has become idols. We've idolized our children. We've placed everything before God. 
And this is why we're failing him. He's not happy. He's not happy with this church. And we keep making like it's everybody else. We're part of it too. The body of Christ is part of the problem. I have in here, uh, what, what I have in here, but yeah, the Ten Commandments, I have the, the church has become self-centered and not concerned about others. When is the last time you heard a church talk about concerning about the lost souls out there? Instead, it's, oh, we're always, it's only about us. Oh, everybody else, oh, they're this particular group of people. Oh, they're just whatever, um, all the names you want to call them in the book. You call them everything and all of this stuff. But when, is, when have you said, you know what? Okay, I know you don't agree with me or I know that we, we have different belief systems and things of that nature. But how about we meet at, uh, at the table? How about I share the love of Christ towards you? How is somebody going to be, how are you going to convert those out there in the world that's lost when you're so caught up in yourself? That's the problem with the church today. We're just so worried. There's churches, thousands of churches throughout the nation, everywhere, been setting in communities for years. In the church, no type of major evangelism program to go out and reach lost souls. We all want to sit on the pew and get a nice uh, comfy pew and let the pit pastor comfort us and let the songs comfort us. And then we go home. We don't go to Bible studies and stuff. And, and here's another thing. I thought of this where now we're in this age of some of these churches there. The, the pastor, the pastors have gotten to the point where they don't teach Bible study no more. They've got these small groups. What's the, the small group junk? That's a bunch of junk. The pastor's been called to preach and teach the gospel. And if he can't do it, then he's got his associate ministers and his deacons. Because I know pastors have other obligations at times. But small groups? You mean to tell me? I know plenty of churches. A lot, a lot of people. I've been in ministry for a long time. A lot of When it comes to Bible study, you don't have that many people come anyway. You have a, a fraction of the people that show up on Sunday morning. And so you're not going to have a field capacity of your uh, a service, you know, with a Bible study, just like it would be the uh, morning service. But for some reason, oh, we want to break people off into these small groups, get a hold of a small group leader in your area, this, that and that and stuff. What about the people that are introverts that don't feel comfortable? I, I'm I'm an introvert. I don't, I wouldn't just feel if I was new coming to the Lord and trying to learn about the Lord, I don't want to have to call up someone and walk into someone's house where there's five or 10 people sitting around a couch and you just walk in and feel like the spotlight is all on you. I mean, that's not the way to do things. This is the kind of stuff I believe that is why this failing Christ, the church is falling off. There's no it should be no reason why the pastor can't get his butt up there in the sanctuary from time to time and still have Wednesday Bible studies or however you do it. Tuesday night at my former church, one of my uh, uh, my pastor, we had noonday Bible study for those that work second shift and night shift. And we had an evening Bible study. And then he even put another study in later in the week for makeup for other people. There's no reason why that can't happen. There's a, this, I mean, it's got to stop. I mean, um, what else do I have here in my notes? Yeah, I have on here Christians. And here's the other thing. We act like we're so concerned with society. We act like we're so concerned with everything and, and, and don't want, uh, we're always looking, I was thinking of, how everyone looks down on the poor. A lot of people are looking down on the poor. A lot of people are looking down on those that are less fortunate. Even Christians are looking down upon other people and, and, and talking about handouts and things of that nature. And I thought about it. I said, you know what? I got in my notes here. Christians are looking for handouts as well. How, wh what are we looking for? I have only seeking God for what they can get out of him. That's what we do. 
We think God is some big piggy bank up in the sky. We just call upon him to fix whatever when it happens. And, and we don't never uh, uh, want to praise him for the bad times and praise him at all times. That's what we're to do. Whether it's good or bad, we always praise him. You stand firm like Job did. And you continue to stand there and, and praise the Lord. And this is why the church is failing him. Because if we don't get what we want out of God, then we pretty much just go about, well, I'm not getting what I want. I, I wanted this. I wanted this house. I wanted this thing, you know, and then that's a whole nother thing when you get into prosperity gospels, because some people think that you can just name it and claim it. And that's still going on. All of this junk. Christ is not happy. Don't think that all of a sudden in an election. It's going to save America. Don't think that one day of some prayer meeting of a nation is going to save everything. We have to repent and it starts with you and I. The church has got to do better. Christ has given us time. He's given to, he's been setting back in all of these churches. I told you, in a previous uh, messages before that the Christ is doing some spiritual restructuring and some churches unfortunately are going to have to close. And that's because they need to close because they are not doing what they were supposed to be doing for Christ. There's a whole nother agenda for the pastor, a whole nother agenda for the members and their doors need to close. So as you listen to this message, think hard. Where area in your life can you improve upon? What area of your life can you be part of that you can help move the, uh, the gospel and the kingdom of God forward? What can you do? What can I do? I ask myself that there's a lot that's left to be done. You have unfinished business. I've got unfinished business. The church has been stagnant for too long. It's time to get up out of the pew and get to doing. Have a heart of compassion. Care about those that are least less, you know, fortunate than you. Care about those that are lost, even if they talk crazy. Pray for them and ask them, ask God, what can I do to reach people like this? So my name is Maurice Braxton. Evangelism is the channel. Uh, for God, this channel is we talk about all kind of things that the church don't want to talk about. We talk about taking Satan head on and his devices, welcoming everybody, including those that don't even know the Lord. So if you like this video, hit like, share this video. If you think somebody needs to hear this and um, until next video, I will work on my other Bible studies as we're talking about the names of Satan and the meaning and why a Christian needs to know. Why, why the, the need to know because if not rep understanding evil he doesn't help you when you walk moving forward the way you need to so that's on a, that'll be coming up but until the next video my friends take care god bless